When I was a little girl, I always enjoyed math. When I complete a problem, I felt empowered. But it wasn't until I became a graduate student in oceanography that I truly understood how math could be applied to our intricate and complex oceans. Math is an incredibly beautiful way to understand the world. Welcome to Wavelengths, where we talk about our planet with experts from Scripps Institution of Oceanography, covering everything from the deep sea to the edge of the atmosphere. I'm Kate Furby, a marine biologist and journalist. I got my PhD here a few years ago, and now I'm back, learning more about what's happening at Scripps. We're here today with Taylor McKee. She is a PhD student, a physical oceanographer, she has a background in engineering, and she's a coder. Is that right? Yeah, and I get to use it every day to understand what our oceans are doing um, in terms of its physics. Cool. And as I understand it, what you do is kind of like looking at underwater weather. Yeah, so the ocean and the atmosphere are actually quite similar. One just moves a lot slower. So you'll see very similar dynamics such as fronts, which is what I study, uh, in the ocean. And fronts in the ocean depend on the ocean's temperature and salinity and sort of the lateral variability that occurs across the surface. So kind of similar to when you're looking at a weather map and you're seeing like a front moving across. Also underneath the water in the ocean, there are like similar fronts that, that can move through. Yes, and you can imagine it almost like a current, and they are everywhere. It's actually quite beautiful. Cool. Okay, so tell us about this instrument. Yes, yeah, so this is the wire walker, and it's funny because it actually walks down a wire to the depths of the ocean, and it collects high resolution um, data points down to like a quarter of a meter, um, understanding what exactly the ocean is doing. Amazing. So this sounds like the Swiss army knife of sampling the ocean, where you can lower it down and figure out like how fast the water's moving, how salty it is, how cold it is. Yes, and we use those properties to understand, put it in the context of physics to understand what the ocean is doing. Sometimes I feel like when you're looking out on the ocean, it's hard to visualize what's happening below the surface. Is there a way we can kind of break it down and figure it out? Yeah, and I can show you. So here we're gonna mimic the submeso scale using coffee and cream. My two favorite things. Lovely, mine too. And uh, in the ocean, the submeso scale describes sort of the interaction between different water masses. It's where lighter water and denser water meet. And this water can be warm and fresh, or it can be cold and salty. And because of these changes in density across the surface of the ocean, really cool dynamics happen underneath. Cool, okay. So the thing that you're interested in looking at are these smaller scale interactions that aren't bothered by what the Earth is doing and that are able to sort of spin and mix and do their own thing. Yes, and so this is kind of similar to, you know, if you have a denser water mass in the ocean and a lighter water mass. And we're gonna dump them together and see how they swirl. Cool, okay. Ooh, okay. So do you see oh, that's actually an Oh eddy. my god, I do. Do you see the eddy? Do you see it straining? Yes. So I study sort of the filament that is occurring there. Oh my god, I actually do understand this so much better. And so what's actually happening beneath the surface is you have a vertical exchange occurring. So you uh, might have the dense water going down and the light water coming up. That's kind of what the submesoscale looks like in the ocean, except instead of coffee and milk, you might have um, fresh water and salty water or cold water and warm water. And what occurs at the surface actually impacts what occurs in the atmosphere. Amazing. Submesoscale currents form at the boundaries of different water masses. These currents can lead to mixing and vertical exchanges that move water around. This controls the heat at the surface. What happens at the surface impacts our atmosphere and our climate. For example, in the Indian Ocean, the water is typically warm. Monsoons gain their power from this warm tropical water at the surface. The submesoscale currents affect that temperature, which may change the strength and duration of the monsoon. It's important to understand these dynamics because they may improve predictions to prepare communities for agriculture, water use, disaster management, or flooding. 
also when it comes to improving our resilience. Being able to respond to those in effective and efficient ways can save lives. That's amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time to explain this to us and thank you for doing this important work. Thank you for having us.